All right, welcome to this session, and uh, this is the last session of the day and of the conference, so <laughs> we are very pleased that you are here. My name is Vera Stravkovic. I'm from East Coast, from Prince George's Community College, and I serve as an advisor to the National Cyber Watch Center and to Cyber Watch West, which is located at, in LA. So, my name is John Tanz. I'm with Marineville Prince College in the Cassio Center, Center for Security Information Service. I'm one of the co PIs uh, for, the, uh, for the center, for a national resource center. And uh, before we start, how many of you are from two year institutions? And how many from four? Okay. And then we have some others. This is a story about partnership and what we have done uh, for cyber, uh, in cybersecurity education. How many of you know, know about Centers for Academic Excellence? You know? Okay. okay. That's a designation that has been established by the National Security Agency 14 years ago. And it was established for four-year institutions. And since that time, there hasn't been anything done for two years. Excuse me. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Nothing has been done for two-year colleges. So in 2006, we had a meeting of several presidents of two- and four-year institutions, people from NSA, people from National Science Foundation, and so forth. And the idea was how do we take that program and bring it to two-year institutions. The reaction was overwhelmingly negative. And the response was, what can community colleges do in cybersecurity? Not much. That was the opinion at the time. Well, it took several years, and in 2010, the uh, CAE2Y has been established. And it is an acronym that stands for um, Centers for Academic Excellence Two Years in Two Year Institutions. And the first six community colleges that became CAE2Y have been, have been granted that status in 2010. And since that time, seven more have been added in 2011, 12 more in 2012. Now we have a total of 24 community colleges in 14 states that have this designation. Two things to be said about it. This is an institutional designation. It is not a designation that is only for the program because when you apply, when you do an application, you have to show uh, is your institution on board with it? Do you have, do you have is cyber uh, uh, security uh, infused in other disciplines in some way? Uh, what kind of support does your department have? What is your curriculum? What do you do as outreach? How is your faculty educated? So there are criteria that one needs to address. Based on all of that, one is rewarded and awarded that status. Uh, they are due, the ca 2 y applications are due January 15th. And now immediately a new caveat. Right now, as we speak, changes are being made to this. So uh, this year for the first time, the deadline will be both January 15th under the old rules and August 15th under new rules. How is it change? Requirements. It used to be, how many of you have heard of CNSS standards? 4011, 4013, 4012. Okay, that used to be the requirement, two of those. That is now nil and void. Those requirements are non-existent. New requirements are being implemented. And, and there are KUs. K stands for knowledge, and U stands for units. So knowledge units will be the new requirements. I'll talk about it later. And then there are criteria to be addressed, and these criteria will be very similar to the old criteria. Again, how do you advance your faculty? How do you do outreach to high schools, K-12? Um, 
what kind of program do you have, uh, uh, is the cybersecurity uh, permeating the institution, and so forth. And it is administered as it was by the National Security Agency. So, so it is an NSA designation. It's not any of the academic institutions that does that. As I said, they are now 25 uh, CA to Y colleges. And more importantly, first of all, remember, there are about 1,200 community colleges in the nation, and only 25 in 14 states are now CA to Y. So you can see that there is a tremendous need for other community colleges to come on board. And the question is, why do you even want to do that? What does it do for me? And that's what John and I are going to do and, and address. What we try to do very hard is to form a community so that not only and a community of CA to Y institutions, and we do it ourselves. What do we do? We, we assist, we share both between John Center and CyberWatch. We share any kind of programs that may be useful to any of the institutions. We also share uh, if somebody has a question or, or need or something, they send an email, we try and answer and address and help. We have a a uh, newsletter that is both published in paper and electronically, which we send to CA to Y, uh, our community. As a matter of fact, I'll send one in, uh, in two weeks, uh, alerting everybody of the changes that are now happening. So that's what we are trying to do to build this community and to strengthen it. But again, what you need to remember is that there is a need for so many more community colleges to become CA to Y. And what do you get out of it? Well, first of all, um, let me tell you, I used to be, before I retired, I used to be the academic vice president at my institution. And as such, I can tell you that if a faculty came to me from IT department or security department and said, well, we are going to do so and so. We are going to map to the standards. Really, you know, I'm dealing with the entire college. It doesn't have that much impact. And I don't really, I, I wouldn't say I don't care, but the interest isn't really there. But when you accomplish this and you become and obtain an institutional award, which is a national designation, then I, as a senior administrator, say, I really take note. And now I know that if that department comes and asks for additional faculty member or additional support, now I will think twice through that. Because now I know that this department is doing something that other departments might not be doing. And it's important for me to support it. Secondly, you know that your president and senior administrators love to, love to brag. And, and that is something that they can brag about. They can send to local papers, they can go to Chamber of Commerce, they can go to their partners, they can go to their other presidents, they can go to their industry partners and say, this is who we are. Now we are a center for academic excellence. As a matter of fact, when my college became one, it was on the marquee for I don't know how long. And the funny thing is that people didn't even realize it was in cybersecurity because you know how marquee is. All they saw is Center for Academic <laughs> Excellence when you pass with the car. Well, so that's another thing. You can build new and stronger partnerships. Industry also recognizes the status of Center for Academic Excellence both in four and two years and in research institutions. So all of a sudden you can build a stronger advisory group. You can build new partnerships. It's very useful both internally and externally. You can you get internal recognition, as I said, and incidentally, that internal recognition is very important. I'm from a STEM discipline. That's my background. My background is in chemistry. But um, once you are, you know, in STEM or liberal arts, and I don't want to offend anybody, but this is a reality. You know, technology is not exactly looked upon always in the same on the same level. It is looked a common stepchild. Let's face it, that's the reality. I'm not saying that it's right, 
but it's a reality. However, when something like this is accomplished and it is shared with the board of trustees and it is shared with the entire faculty, the whole department and the whole discipline gains in stature. And whether it's not tangible, it's not something that you can touch, but it is very important. So you get internal recognition, external recognition, enhanced internal uh, uh, support, and all of what I have mentioned so far. <coughs> and uh, on top of it, uh, you know, life is unfair. When NSA established CAE, they gave support, monetary support, to all four-year institutions that became CAE. When two-year institutions received the designation of CAE to Y, that support was non-existent. However, <laughs> however, in the last year, actually, the, the uh, Department of Homeland Security and National Science Foundation have managed to get some support to the first six recipients of the CA to, uh, to Y status, and we published the report which we shared with CHS, with the NSA, to show how a small monetary support to these two-year institutions has gone, how far it has gone, how much these six colleges have done with that small, it was $50,000 for each one of the six institutions. I mean, that's small in terms of government and NSF. Uh, um, figures, but a lot has been accomplished with that. And so we hope that with more and more, um, more two-year institutions becoming CA to Y, and we, it's become to a critical mass of two-year institutions that become centers for academic excellence. I believe that that will be a force, to the force, that will uh, that uh, agencies will have to address and will be ready to provide additional support to. And um, these are some of the results of, the, of that supplemental grant. John's institution one, was one of the first six that received um, uh, the su uh, supplemental funds, and they have done a yeoman job in mentoring. They have done a superb job. Incidentally, the CA to Y community mentors and helps other community colleges that want to become CA to Y. They provide mentorship and help with application, how best to address criteria, critique of the application, and so forth. That's something that you should keep in mind for any one of the two institutions that may be interested in applying. Um, and uh, I think I will let you, John, take over from me. All right. So, you know, really, what is this? It, it, it really is sort of the closest thing to, you know, cybersecurity accreditation, you know, institutional accreditation. It really is something in the So if you, if you earn this, you get a, a, a plaque that goes into your college. You have a nice ceremony, usually in Washington, D.C., that your president and administrators are, are invited to the nice dinner for it. Um, and um, you're also on a website. So, I mean, we have UPS as an example in our, in, in our district. And in the past, we weren't eligible to be a CA2Y. They were going to the local, um, you know, local four-year colleges that had a CA2Y. When we got some of the security people there, notice we were on the website and we got a call from them saying, you know, we're looking for additional business-based program in, in cybersecurity. So, I mean, it goes on an official website, not our website. It's a website from NSA that, that basically publishes this. So, you know, what is it? What are the advantages really of of um, going for this? So, first of all, to me, I think the biggest advantage is it brings you into the community. So, I can tell you, we work at nine of the institutions um, that have received the TAY like to uh, a designation. Um, so, what does it mean that we're working with them? Well, the first thing, of course, the, the, the basis of a accreditation is that you're mapping the standards. What should you be teaching in a cybersecurity program? Well, if there's no standard out there, you could be teaching anything. How do you know that it's relevant? Right? So the first thing that they, that they do, they're, they're going to be mapping this to the new NICE standard. How many of you have been to the NICE website? The NICE, NICE website. So I mean, very structured, um, well-developed. Now, I think far better than what we've had in the past with the CNSS standards. Um, standard for what we should be teaching in, in the different areas of, of cybersecurity. 
So the first thing that they're going to do is, is require that we map to a certain number of these KUs, and that's all being redone. I think it's going to be a better system than we have now. Um, some of the things in the CNS standards were somewhat outdated and very government-oriented, government organization-oriented. The new ones I see are much more practical for both government agencies and businesses. Right, but the first thing that we basically do is that we do, you do an audit of your, of your, um, your uh, curriculum, and you do somewhat of a gap analysis to find out what things are you teaching and what things you're missing. And the beauty of, of the mentoring is we can help you with that gap that we find. So whatever we find that you aren't uh, achieving, we can give you labs, we can give you curriculum, we can give you all types of supplemental materials that help you meet that step. And that's usually the biggest hurdle for most organizations is, is addressing that, making sure that you have the, the proper courses and you address the, the, uh, the, the, the standards. But from there, then, you take a holistic approach to your institution. In order to be a CA2Y, uh, the first thing they're going to do is want to know, okay, what are your faculty credentials? And again, in the mentoring process, and as a centers, we can help you with that. So several of the first group of mentees that we had last year, we ran special faculty development workshops so that they could meet specific courses or maybe specific products or so on so that they could master these other courses, not only master them, but that their faculty members had the knowledge to teach those components of, of, of the course. So um, one of the things that we'll do is work with you so that your faculty can have the credentials. And by the way, credentials can even be industry certifications. So last year, one of, one of the institutions we worked with was Ivy Tech. So Ivy Tech brought faculty members in from across the state. Indiana is one centralized community college system. And we had, uh, as an example, a CISSP course. Five day course that they could bring back. Remember, it was free. We basically covered it through our, our, our grant. We did another one for Security Plus and so on. Now, all of a sudden, not one institution, but five other institutions and multiple faculty members that had multiple credentials. And they could use that now in applying for this, uh, for this designation. Okay? Yeah? And uh, is this mentoring course done through Canopy? It's done through our centers. And as a five, the first six institutions each serve as mentors. And we're more than happy to, I mean, we work with colleges that had no program, to colleges that had programs, sort of a couple classes there. Ivy Tech was sort of like that. Each institution taught a couple different courses. They didn't really necessarily have certificates or degrees and so on. So we helped them basically put together a fairly formal program, map their curriculum, help them um, put together uh, faculty workshops and in, in, in classes. Um, so that was the, the first two hurdles that, that, that we got through. Um, if you, the other criteria, yeah. And if you want to send an email, you can send, you will see our emails at the end. You can send an email to me or to John. When we had the supplemental grant, I, uh, I had the mentor, mentor program organized. So we would just, you know, I would match you with the mentor. And that's what we do. Excuse me? You can only do this for two years com community colleges. We it actually did it for four years. Four institutions years. Four years have been for longer. Yeah. Uh, we have people who are willing and interested in, in mentoring four-year institutions. Uh, then the, the next thing that they, that they look at is that you practice what you preach. So you literally have to work with your institution to make sure that they have published policies and that they're doing best practices in cybersecurity. That's a really good idea because if you're going to hang a shingle out saying you're a cybersecurity school, you're a target now, right? I mean, they, the first thing you want to do is embarrass you. So you really want to work with your IT staff, your administration, and so on. And I'll tell you, in our case, those are really great things because it brought people from across the campus together, recognized we weren't for this common um, designation. And it really, we even brought outside contractors in to come in and help us assess our status. You know, how safe was our institution? Were our policies up to date? Did we have proper from the people in, in positions that were necessary to, to protect our systems. So that's part of the, the uh, application process. You have to sort of show what are your institutional policies that, that meet these requirements. Right? The next thing you want to do is to have you work with programs across the campus. So what do we mean by that? Well, do you think people going into healthcare nowadays are going to be data custodians? Are they going to be handling sensitive information? Are people coming out of your business program going to be doing that? And so on. It really is, is an issue across the campus now. Even though know, maybe at a lower level, the idea of securing sensitive information and, and basic security best practices is something that can be taught throughout the campus. 
So one of the things that really gave us a great opportunity because we created a small little uh, security awareness um, unit that we could teach in our business programs. We now teach in our nursing and, and healthcare programs and so on. And even if it's not a standalone class, they adopt it as part of one of their classes. And, and literally, we had all the faculty come in for a summer workshop from different departments in our, on our campus. We taught this two-day you know, little workshop, gave them our exercises and so on. And they didn't even adopt our classes in a lot of cases. They just basically put it into their courses. They incorporate some of them into their courses. Well, that's part of what they want to see is this application, is that there is cross disciplinary um, collaboration in this area and that uh, people across your campus understand the need for you know, secure data and securing your, your, uh, your sensitive information. Okay? So it's, it's another one of the, the main criteria. One of the criteria I just love is that they require articulation. We should have articulation anyhow, right? Both up articulation and down articulation, right? So articulation with high school and forming that pathway so you're bringing future students into your program, but also articulation with the four-year schools. And the beauty of this is for them to maintain their designation, they now have to show right. articulation coming down. What did that really mean for us? Well, it really made a big impact on us. We have three institutions in our local uh, community, uh, four-year institutions, that needed collaboration with us. Not only did it enable us to put articulation here so that our degrees were, were articulated, but we also now, some of our faculty members teach classes there, and we actually have some of their teachers teaching classes in our program. So it will sort of work both ways. Both sides benefited from it. Both sides were able to maintain their, their designation. Uh, but really built that community and built a stronger overall program in both the two-year and four-year uh, level programs. And I really like that it's part of their requirements too. So it's part of the regular CAE, four-year institution. They have to have articulation agreements as well as us having articulation agreements uh, with those. And then the, the last thing, which I think is, you know, if you're going to have a cybersecurity program, you should have other partnerships with businesses and community organizations and so on. And that's one of the things that they do as well. And, and I'll tell you, that's one of the areas that I, I feel we really build quality programs. When we go across the country, we help people articulate and, and get this designation. You know, we introduce them to things like um, the, the FBI, Computer Crimes Division, and the um, Infrared, right? A lot of schools never heard of it. Never part of that organization, right? So we introduce them to the local infrared chapter. <coughs> instructors and even students in some cases can now attend these organizations that are out there to help share and protect. I mean, the idea is to protect the nation's infrastructure, not to build a good program. That's what NSA is, is, is looking for. So now our faculty member, on a regular basis, might go to the monthly or quarterly chapters of InfraGuard or some of the other agencies that are out there that share the, the current status and what are the <coughs> systems that are out there. If you're going to be teaching in this area, this is not just an area you pick up a textbook and teach. This is dynamic content that's changed on a regular basis. To teach a quality program, you have to be plugged in. You have to know about like, the common vulnerability databases that are out there and, and other national resources that we've invested in heavily to help us protect our national infrastructure. That if you're teaching this stuff, you have to have some idea of it. You have to understand what some resources are, how to get to them, why you'd want to use them, you know, and so on. So that, that final criteria is really those types of business partnerships. Um, and, I, and I think it's a really great thing because as we've worked with institutions, that's not because they were missing that. And when you miss that, it, it, it's not a dynamic program. It's a static program that really is not going to have long-lasting um, uh, impact. And really, you're really not preparing students for the real world if they don't know that there's a database out there that tracks all known vulnerabilities and it's easy to use. And they can, you know, that's something that every student leaving your program should know. Right. Every student should know that there are law enforcement partnerships that they can uh, participate in. And I'll tell you one thing we use, how many is anyone um, participate with InfraGuard? Uh, InfraGuard, again, it's an FBI partnership with businesses and, and business organizations. There's local chapters across the country. So Chicago has one, Illinois has several of them. Almost every state in the country has one. But the beauty of that is if you join InfraGuard, and you can have your students join them for guard. I have all of our students in this area join them for guard. They can go to the chapter meetings as well. They actually do a, a simple background check. So to join this, they're not going to let anyone go to these meetings because they're telling you what are the common threats right now to our, our next infrastructure. So before your students can actually regularly attend this and become a member, they actually do a background check. It's a great thing for a student going into this area, right? And they can come back and say, I'm a member of them for guard. I have this background check. Um, and, and, you know, it's one additional thing, but also it's a network where they're going to meet people from businesses across your area 
and they're looking to hire people in, in cybersecurity. So I think it's a really great part of, of, of the designation because it sort of makes you, you know, reach outside the community and plug into the, the resources that are out there as a, a program that's teaching this uh, content. Yeah. John, we also have a very good relationship with HPCIA. Mm -hmm. And I know our, our former president of SoCal is now at the Chicago chapter. So I'd be happy to help connect you here as well. Okay. But that's, that's the, the final criteria. So what I wanted to do, um, we, we talk about, oh, oh, I, I didn't mention that uh, the last criteria is student uh, development, and that's like your actual courses. So they want to see that you have a logical process for your courses. What are your courses? What are the certificates you have? What are the, what are the uh, degrees that, that all these students can get from the program? <coughs> um, by the way, does that have any impact? I should just mention a couple things in this. When they do the audit, on the website now, you are mapped to a specific CMS standard, and later on it's going to be to the KU standard. Well, what's the significance of that? Well, any contractors with the federal government or employees with the federal government that are in jobs where they are data custodians, in many cases for them to get promotions or to get jobs in that area, they have to meet certain criteria. That's the criteria. They can literally say, I took a course in Rain Valley. Rain Valley is a CA2Y. Their course is mapped to these criteria. And in many cases, that's going to qualify them for, for promotion or um, for um, entry level into, into certain types of jobs. So it really is a, a comprehensive um, uh, program for especially anyone working with the federal government. And that's really what, what a lot of these were, were established for. Right? Um, some of these other things, uh, what, what I like, it's, it's top down. Um, we basically, we had to have our president on board, our vice president on board. They seen the recognition and they like, like uh, Dr. Z said, it's something they're going to be able to go to the board of trustees with and so on and talk about you know, the quality program that we met this national um, uh, uh, designation. Right. Um, it, it really makes your institution into a hub. Um, you know, organizations look on this website for institutions both for uh, four-year colleges, for research that's being done, for re recruiting from students, and in our case, it, it now is for recruiting for students, or a place where they may come to want to take classes on particular technologies or, or, or uh, products. Right. Uh, I thought what I would do, is there one after this? All right, this is yeah. one you might want to talk about. And I thought I would show you our website, because part of what we do in the, uh, in the mentoring process is I give you our website as a template. And then what we do is we start to work with you to fill in that template. All right, so we, we start with, okay, what courses are you going to present? Do your courses match to the standards? If they don't, what are some supplemental materials we can provide for you that help you? Are your faculty up there? And I can show you the website and the types of things that are necessary for the application process. Um, but I can tell you overall as an institution, it's meant a lot to us. Um, in our case, they, they, the, our community just invested over a million dollars in our, in our center, our virtual relations center, because we now serve somewhat as a hub for our community in, in cybersecurity. And, and this is an important part of that. Right. Let me show the website real quick. <laughs> and actually, it is both on the CyberWatch website as well. You have a yeah, we should show both. Yeah, we should show both. The only problem is that the applications were submitted under the old, in, in the old format and with the old requirements, and it is changing as we speak. The new changes are being implemented this spring. So if you want to see our application, I basically put our whole application on the web as a, as, as a web page. So if you just go to ca2y.morainevalley.edu, it basically is our application. I took all the PDFs and documents and so on. And I just stuck them up here. So the first page sort of talks about what it's all about, what the program's all about, and so on. And then we have tabs for each of the criteria. So if you go through each one of the tabs, you can see what we submitted as criteria for evaluation for this program. Um, so you can see partnerships. All right, we had to prove what the different partnerships. I'm not going to go through all of this, but we literally had links to um, the schools that we have articulation agreements with or partnerships with the four-year institutions, the businesses that we work with in our area, um, any kind of special events that we've run. So we've had like a, a girls uh, summer camp to expose girls to uh, 
careers in, in IT security. And a lot of these are links to toolkits. So you can actually download them and it tells you how to run a three-day camp for seventh and eighth graders. All right, and some of the things that we've done and so on. And if you want more information, you just contact us. All right? um, other institutions that we've um, shared resources with, curriculum, faculty members, content, um, uh, events that we've done, combined events, things like that. So that's basically all we did through here. Um, if you go to our one on faculty, it lists all our faculty. Let me just add something. Uh, student here, I remember uh, one faculty member called me the night before the application, CA to Y application was due, panicking. She said, I'm not submitting it. I'm not ready. I can't do. We don't have enough partnership. I said, wait a moment. Do you have summer camp? Yes, we do, but it's not inside the security. Well, what is it in? Well, it's IT and this and that. Well, you have an outage. You do have a camp. You can therefore, that's what what this program is looking for, institutional award. It's not just in that narrow program. So I said, list that. Have you done anything in terms of mentoring students in high school? Well, yes, but we didn't do it in cybersecurity. But it doesn't matter because you have done that. You do have an infrastructure at your institution it to do that, yep. that is useful, that you can use. And she started thinking differently. So. You have to think when you do this, not just within your own discipline, but you have to go out and look at it much more broadly. And when you do, you have. Every two-year college has many of these things. Every two-year institution does this outreach to K-12. Every single two-year institution has uh, articulations with those four-year institutions and works with local high schools. It is just recognition of what you have within your institution. And you can basically tap through each of these, but under faculty, we basically have a bio that we put up there for our faculty. What certifications do they have? What courses are they taking? What are their degrees that they, that they bring? Uh, and I'll tell you, we share faculty. And they encourage that. So we have Lewis University in our, in our district. We have DePaul University in our district. In a lot of cases, we're sharing faculty. We've taught workshops and, and classes at their institution. They've taught workshops and, and classes at our institution. Um, and they, that's one of the things they want to encourage. Um, and um, on some of these, you'll also see that um, we have a request at the bottom. If you're looking for faculty to take a particular class to prepare for certification, uh, that's one of the things that we do with science. We try to help you build the, the capacity so you can bring more students through and, and have a higher level program. Right? Um, the student development, that's really your curriculum. I don't think you go, but it basically lists all of our classes, it lists our certificates, it lists the, the degrees, who we articulate with, how students can go on for a four year degree and onto a, a, a graduate degree ultimately. All right. um, the IA programs, um, that's the internal programs within your institution. So this was an easy sell. I'm telling you, we went to the healthcare department uh, in, in faculty there, and we told them that we could share content for. Um, for uh, handling sensitive information and things like that, they were more than happy. And then we did a summer workshop for them. We had, we had just about every nurse, uh, or I should say nursing instructor there. We had most of the people in other areas. Because this is something that they're dealing with as well. But it's not an area that they really are uh, experts in. Right? They're radiologists or nurses or whatever. And they have a four-hour workshop. It was really a great thing for them. And we've actually had them request year after year if we could do other workshops on them and just best practices. And, um, you know, simple things like the difference between uh, different types of encryption or forensics or, or, or other things. So, uh, but yeah, that's our website. It, I think it serves as a good template if you're looking and have some interest in applying. Um, a lot of schools, we, I mean, we started from scratch. So a couple of schools we, we worked with, um, um, schools down in Texas, El Paso had just a couple courses. And now they're going to be applying for CD2 status. Uh, I detected last year, we've got the University of, of um, I should say, uh, Community College in Honolulu this year, Florida uh, State College. Uh, I think we had eight this year that applied for CA2 that we, that we mentored them. So we're more than happy to work with you. And you want to you show your website? Please. No, let me just go okay. through this and then if he has time we can do that. Uh, just to tell you, I know that you're not familiar with the old application. But the new one is going to be based on what they call a uh, knowledge unit instead of the standards 411, 413, and so forth. Those, 
knowledge unit are referred to as KUs. And KUs, every institution will have to address a core set of these uh, information assurance cyber defense topics or KUs. Each KU will have a certain number of topics. They are not published yet. They'll be published sometimes in March. And as soon as they are published, we are going to inform our centers, will inform all our members about what it is, what the changes are. And if you are interested, you can uh, check with us, email us, and ask, and we'll connect you to the website or whatever where you will find them. Yes, go ahead. Can you just give an example of what an acceptable KU would be? I mean, any idea? Ah. They're not published, well, but I can't tell you. We could go to NICE's website, and if you look at the core requirements, it's going to be a point system, by the way. Yes. So you're going to get so many points in core, and then you get so many points in each of the well, optional and that's and what you're talking about. Yes. Yes. And you can actually get. Did you see like the square that goes into each of the different? Uh, uh, there's a link in there that goes to all the um, skills and knowledge areas. I should bring it up on the big screen. Okay. Yeah, but um, can we give you the KUs now? Well, no, because no, but I, I, I just want I'm trying well, to wrap my mind around whether or not we're even in the, in the Oh, ballpark. you will be, because also they are doing it at three different levels. Right. They are doing, looking at it as, as a two year level, four year level, and research. Right. Level. I mean, we teach so security plus CCNA yes. security. We it will be very similar. Security into our yes. servers and you stuff. You will like be that. fine. And every two year institution there will be fine if you do what you're doing. Right. Absolutely, we won't have any issue. But if nothing is official until those things are happening. I mean it's really great that NIST is taking this over. Because now we really are going to have one model right. to you know to uh um glasses on that. I mean, before we go to that, is there a reason why this change happened? I mean, is there a history? Yes, because uh, most institutions, including the two institutions, have been complaining that the CNS standards were outdated, okay. outmoded, when they were developed, they were fine, but yeah. they haven't been really changed to, to go with the flow and the change in the field, and everybody was complaining. Okay, okay. And that's the reason why there are so many. So this is an improvement. There are no to worry about it. The only difficult part is this transition because it is yeah. not very well done and it's not clear. But it is an improvement. Yeah, well, we haven't filed our application, so you might as well just wait. Well, it is. Right. Here yeah. are two, two. If you are ready with your application, yeah. you may as well uh, submit it now, January 15th. Because if you do, yeah. you are going to be okay for the next two years. And, and then, at the end of two years, you will submit it under the new rules. Okay. If you are not ready to submit it on January 15th, then you wait and submit it August 15th. Okay. But you have now, this year, this only one year, you have two ways of submitting it and two different days. Mm -hmm. So my personal suggestion, if you are ready, do it now. Because it will be smooth sailing and you will be okay for two years. So they're not ready, so we'll just wait. Then, if you're not quite ready, and you wait until August 15th, and a lot of work that you have done will be after it, so well, you will just have to now put it in different uh, They actually have a full published, uh, they, they break it down into different areas. And then they actually publish the actual knowledge and skill elements. And, and the whole thing is, it's, it's like uh, Dr. Z said, you don't have to master everything. Right. It's going to be a point system. Right. So you have to meet so many points. And if you're short of them points, what you do is you work with us and there, and there are things we can give you to, to supplement that. So it might be labs, mm -hmm. it might be supplemental reading materials. Uh, I'll tell you, in most cases we work with people, it's very little that we have to give them. I mean, we have a packet already that somewhat meets everything. We basically give them everything and say, here are things you were missing, here are things you already had, but these, these are supplemental things we might use. Yeah, it's just that we're changing our, our course content right now and our degree programs, and the idea is, is we're actually trying to integrate security into our both our programs, our two key programs. Okay. And so if we do that, then this seems like, like this seems like a great way to uh, 
Validate it. Exactly. Okay. And also give us some guidance. And if maybe we haven't looked at something, maybe we can look at the KUs and say, oh, we need to do this, this, and this to, to make us. We're in a really difficult point right now. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's good in some ways because I have to admit, the, the old CNS standards, a lot of people look at them and they're like, oh, some are really old yeah. and this one applicable. But again, right. you didn't have to meet every single thing. Right. I mean, that's uh, um, here. What you need to do is the core, and once you have the core, and there are different for the three levels, three-year, four-year, and three right. three and then you choose which option you want. And the specialty area will be really more for four-year institutions. And I can tell you, you really get two shots at this because one of the things that we ask you to do is to submit it to us, and we review it. I don't know how many of you review oh, it. Oh, I review it. And I can look through and say, you know, this looks good. I, I add up the points of where they're going to go. You're really going to be strong here, strong here. Let me give you some suggestions what you might want to do here. And then when you submit it, they will all, if you're short, if you're still short on something, they'll still come back and say, you know, these things really look good. This wasn't documented enough or this wasn't. But they, they'll still give you um, a point to, to fix things before they do a final review. Tom, can you just that thing? Oh, um, yeah, we got it. So ultimately, this is a better system. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with this. I mean, this whole thing is just, I'd like to, it's a little too abstract because the KUs haven't been published, published therefore. Yeah. But I was just trying to get an idea, just if you had. You know, yeah, what were the and I took, let me tell you, I took this <coughs> to from an email that was sent to me because uh, LSA specifically has to not say too much right. until we have the press release and until right. it is Got official. It. Okay. And so I took it and copied it for a datum from what I was sent. And, and I can tell you, they were, they were just at their institution a couple of weeks ago, and the core is really going to be Security Plus, mm -hmm. plus a couple things that Security Plus doesn't mean. So what right. do you mean by that? They really want you to know the national resources. Right. You've got to know what CV database is. You've got to know what you know. Some of the things that they've set up nationally for you as a program mm -hmm. that they want you to incorporate into it. Okay. So if you think about it that way, if you have a course that covers Security Plus mm -hmm. and you're going to add a couple of these things to it, that really meets the core content. Okay. And then the other things going to front. Yeah, that's it right there. That's the actual document. Um, but the other things actually are then areas of specialization. So network security and specialization, forensic, risk management. They're going to have several different areas. If you look at the nice mm -hmm. criteria, it's going to basically be the same areas of specialization. And they will maintain, somebody said, CA is becoming obsolete. It's not. On contrary, they're going to play, uh, keep it, and they're going to have CA to Y, but it will be CA IA slash CD, which is information assurance slash cyber defense to Y. Uh, they'll have the E, they'll have the ENR, Education and Educational Research. These are the four-year institutions that's the two years. So the status will be maintained, and, uh, and uh, but it will be changed the title. And, and I think that's the biggest mindset for two-year schools going for this, is they want you to be aware of and use the national yeah. resources. So I don't know if you know, like NIST publishes all kinds of guidelines for best practices, risk management. You can go up there's a whole lot of NIST documents. All right, See, there's an ISO standard for network security management. So the, the uh, 12,000 standard, 1201, one tells you what kind of things you need to do, and one tells you how to do them. But they want you to have some of that built in your in your your content. So it's not just pure security plus, but security plus plus the resources. That's really what they want, and, and it makes sense. They spent millions of dollars, billions of dollars in some cases, building these resources. And they're they're going to be really great things for your students to go into the job market with knowing these things. So that's, that's the real key to it. Okay, any questions? I've got one. Is there going to be an ongoing training requirement for faculty? Is there a certain obligation to attend a number of workshops? I know that's what my administration is probably asking. Uh, there's no specific no. requirement no. for that. No. It's just basic credentials. But they will, and they typically ask what are the credentials and how do you professionally advance your faculty? Well, you can say my faculty uh, goes and takes a workshop from John Center or from CyberWatch Center. Or they go to the two major conferences each year. You go to the yeah. conference and you go to the conference, the Cochrane. 
Uh, and part of this whole thing is to bring people into the community and to use those resources to be and, part of things. Which and one more thing that CyberWatch has, for instance, funds given by MSF to support faculty to go to a colloquium. You know what the colloquium is? CC conference that is typically in June, this June, I think it is 9th and 10th. It's it one major academic conference, that's it. Uh, and we have the funds to pay for, for travel. And last time when, I, when we advertised it, and we advertised it to youth centers, to CyberWatch, to everybody under the sun, and you don't get enough applicants. And you get paid your travel and your hotel and, uh, you know, conference fees. Conference, fees. conference fees. The whole thing is paid, and it is NSF funds. So right now, I have funds again because they were given to CyberWatch to support faculty to go to NICE, NICE conference, well that's a scratch, so I have it for June. And if you are interested and inform your colleagues that that resource is available. But you have to be one of the... You the don't. Well, you do well, not. Well, on contrary. Well, on yeah. contrary. And I said once, and I, when I did my report on it, showed the map and tried to get you know, people from every state, if possible. And also, they're actually looking more to people who don't have, who are not the A to one. But people, they want to grow new programs, they want to inculcate right. faculty into this whole idea. Yeah. And it is, as John said, an excellent conference. And you have it paid. You don't have to do anything. But say I really want to go, and usually on the end. I really want to go. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to go. <laughs> 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 but on the application, you do have, you know, right. you know, to say why you want to go, and you say, well, I'm interested to develop my own curriculum, or I'm interested to learn about blah 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 blah, or I'm interested da 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 da. And, and one other thing, I learned the hard way, um, in your inverse is not tracking that until you give me back your report, which is again just 100 words. Just